I'm about to get started on a new pair of speakers and I've sorted out the solid wood that I'm going to be using to build the front baffle of those. It's the red oak that's mainly right in front of me. I took all of the red oak that I had inside my lumber rack over there and scattered it all over my shop, sorted through it. And then I turned on the uh, dehumidifier overnight to make sure that it dries out the shop. I'll have to measure it just to make sure it is dry enough to use. Now the tuck slightly or briefly about the design is based on the, well, it is a continuation of the mock-up that I built a few months ago, something I'm calling a coax um, array. And if you don't know what a coax is, it's a two speaker arrangement. In this case, it's a six mid range ring around a central tweeter. The tweeter is horn loaded, so it's fairly high efficiency. The mid ranges themselves are not very efficient, but six of them together will get it up closer to the tweeter. And then below that, there's going to be two eight inch woofers to fill out the set. So like I said, I built the mock-up months ago and at that time I got a bunch of comments from people saying I was ripping off Tecton and yes I'll admit that it looks very much like the Tecton and yes I'll admit that it is inspired partially by the Tecton. But the key difference here is that the Tecton uses a ring of tweeters that are the same as the central tweeter and his idea there is to make it so that you've got a lot of power as in six or seven motors, motors being the magnet and voice coil of a, a driver, driving very lightweight uh, dome tweeters to produce these higher frequencies and give it the lightness and, and response that they say you get from that. That's not my intention here. My intention is to duplicate or mimic what you get from a coax, a coax being two speakers with the tweeter in the center. And my measurements of the mock-up suggest that what I've done, at least roughly, works. So that encouraged me to go further. And the first thing I did when I got back into this the other day was do some more planning and sketch up uh, the box arrangement that I had to begin with, I didn't like, and it was very difficult to get the volume I needed, that 45 or 50 liters in that arrangement because it looked too clunky. So I switched up to a solid wood baffle on a backing box, which I think is a fairly distinctive look and I like it. It gives me what I'm looking for in that that black box on the back can be, you know, basically any size you want. I don't want it to be too big though, but I'll easily be able to get the 50 liters that I need there. So that is the arrangement with the baffle. On the front, the baffle will be solid red oak. That's the wood that I have here. And I'll be milling it on the, well, I'll be milling the holes, the driver holes and recesses on my CNC to get ready for that. I drew it up in V-Carve and then I exported that into G-Code files to bring out here and do a test. I always like to do, even if I'm doing it with a router, as I've shown in my previous builds before, I always want to, you know, make sure that the hole I'm cutting <laughs> is the right size, the right depth. So I don't want to be doing that on the finished baffle first. I really want to do that on the sample and then do it on the finished baffle. That way, if I ruin the sample, no big deal. If I ruin the solid oak baffle, then I've got some very expensive firewood. So after I got that done, like I said, I came out here and I sorted through the stock that I had and I selected actually three pieces. The other one is up on the miter saw now getting ready to be cut. That is going to be a makeup piece, or I might actually cut two pieces out of that for makeup pieces. Because what I have to do is I have to glue pieces together to make the width of the baffle that I need, which is 12 inches wide and 34 inches long. So I'll be cutting some red oak over there on the miter saw, flattening it on my jointer, and then running it through the planer until I get it down to uniform thickness.
all of these pieces are slightly cupped, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut them in half on the table saw, and that'll make it so I'm not losing so much wood when I plane it down to make it flat. Also, it's less of a load on the jointer and the planer. Now that I've got them all planed down close to what they need to be, I need to cut them to width again, but this time I want to make sure that I'm getting the most that I possibly can out of the width of each piece. As you can see, some of them have bark on the edge still, and I want to eliminate that as much as I possibly can. In fact, I don't want any at all on the front. Having a little bit on the back is okay because it'll be hidden. Then I change the blade on my saw to one that's a lot sharper. So I can recut all the edges to make them as straight as I possibly can and get the parts glued together. When I milled up the solid wood that I'm using here, I made sure that I had enough to cut these pieces. These are the glue on each edge of the baffle to make it look thicker. <laughs> 